Welcome to another edition of Footprints in American History. Today, we're going to talk about Ray Caldwell, the pitcher who was struck by lightning and went on to complete the game. First of all, I want to tell you a little bit about Ray Caldwell. He had kind of a bizarre career. His story is probably just as interesting as the story of him getting hit by lightning. Matter of fact, his whole life seemed to be a story of just bizarre ups and downs. Now, Ray Caldwell had originally started out for the New York Yankees. They originally called by a different name before they changed to the Yankees, but he was with them throughout both names. Now, he had pitched for them, but he had a problem with drinking, and it was a really bad problem. The Yankees got very, very frustrated with him. They had suspended him repeatedly. They had got angry with him and fined him on top of that, but it was just one issue after another. To the point, at one point, his, his manager in 1916 told him, you're suspended for two weeks. Well, Caldwell back in those days had an issue of, he just had an ability to just disappear and nobody would know where he would go. So what happened was he did this one time, two week suspension, but he didn't come back for six months. Even his own family had no idea where he had went. He comes back six months later after the two week suspension to report to the Yankees again. They believed that what had happened was that he had gone to Panama and pitched under an assumed name. Now, during 1917 and 1918, he, the Yankees were tired of this. They wanted to find a way to get this pitcher under control. That he was a good player. He was posting great numbers, but they they were having problems with his behavior because of the drinking. So they had two detectives follow him during those two years. Unfortunately, he kept eluding the detectives. So what happened was the Yankees got tired of it, and after the 1918 season, they cut him. They weren't going to take it anymore. So he signed with the Boston Red Sox. Now, during his time with the Red Sox, he went 7-4, he posted a 3.96 ERA. But the drinking was once again an issue. They were getting frustrated with Boston also. Plus, on top of that, when they were going on the road, he had a roommate with him that he was influencing. The player was 24 years old, he was a superstar, and they really wanted to keep him from influencing this person. The player, by the way, was Babe Ruth. So what happens was, come early August, the Red Sox, they don't want to deal with this anymore. They don't want him influencing Babe Ruth anymore. So they caught him. Now, he gets signed shortly after that by Tris Speaker, who is the manager of the Cleveland Indians. The Indians liked him. They saw his numbers. They saw the potential. However, what happened was Tris Speaker had it put into the contract with the Indians to let him drink. So when Caldwell's looking at the contract, he's telling him, look, you forgot to put, I am not to drink in here. It says here that I'm to drink. So speaker tells him, yes, that, and you're gonna do this. Now, what had happened was back in those days, baseball only had like a few men for their rotation. It's not like today where they had five men in the rotation. So. The way Speaker was thinking was, okay, Caldwell, we know you have a drinking problem. So he's thinking, you pitch, then go out tonight after the game, get drunk, or you can get drunk the next day, sleep off the hangover. But he wanted him back two days later, ready to throw batting practice, ready for a game, ready to be able to throw spins, sprints, whatever it was, he wanted him back, ready to go within two days. So this started working out pretty good in the interim. So on this date, Ray Caldwell is having a very good game against the Philadelphia Athletics. So far they have four hits and one walk. He's pitching very well against them through eight innings. So now in the ninth, he's pitching, but the rain starts. And it's getting it's coming off Lake Erie at the stadium. There's 20,000 fans in attendance and it's just getting worse. But Caldwell is trying to work through this. Now, Caldwell was known for three pitches. He was known for the curveball, he was known for the fastball, and back then the spitball was still legal, and he was quite effective with the spitball. So he's trying to work through this with the storm coming upon them. And by now, he's gotten two outs, and 
It's looking like he can get it, but the storm has just gotten so ferocious that it's just gotten really bad. He's trying to work through the rain when all of a sudden there's a lightning flash in the field and every player is just ducking for cover. So what happens, it terrifies them, all the fans are, are scared, it, it frightens them also, and when it's all over, what happens is all the position players stand up and they're okay. By this point, half the fans are starting to make their ways to the exit. They're a little bit nervous now because of this lightning strike. So what happens is they look over to the pitcher's mound and here is Ray Caldwell laying on his back on the mound with his arms flat against the ground. They come over to him, they're terrified. Is he dead? So they're trying to see. Now the catcher, when he first touches him, he said he felt a shock. Well, he's trying to see if he's alive, so they're trying to make sure he is. Finally, after a short time, he opens his eyes, he groans, he rolls over to his knees, and he slowly gets up. They're thinking, we need to get you to a hospital. We need to get a doctor to see you. His chest was on fire just moments before. So they're just shocked. He looks at them and he says, I still have one more out to get. They're thinking he's crazy. You're, you're talking about getting another out. You just got struck by lightning. So he looks at his shortstop and he says, give me the dang ball and point me toward the plate. So the shortstop complies. He gets over to the plate. The umpires are trying to figure out what to do. Finally, they shrug their shoulders and they say, play ball. So now Joe Dugan with Philadelphia Athletics is at the plate. Ray Caldwell heeds the ball toward the plate. Dugans whacks the ball gets a line drive to third. Now the third baseman, he's trying to catch the ball, but he's not able to do it, so he kind of whacks it down. He, he slaps it down to the ground so he can get the ball. He grabs it, he throws it to first, and barely gets Joe Dugan for the out. So now the game is over, and Ray Caldwell has just pitched a complete game, despite having been struck by lightning and his chest being on fire. Three weeks later, he throws a no-hitter against his old team, the New York Yankees. A year later, with the Cleveland Indians, Ray Caldwell and the Cleveland Indians win the World Series. My name's Jeff Dial. I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please like and share the video. Please subscribe to the channel and also if you get a chance, ring the bell. That'll give you notifications of future videos. And if you get the chance, also check out our Facebook groups. We have a lot of information in there of stories that you may not have heard of that did not get posted on YouTube. Also, you'll learn about upcoming videos or previous videos. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching. Fair winds and following seas.